Okay, Oval fans, we're here to talk Season 4, Episode 5, Image, Power, and Money. 8 out of 10, I thought this was a pretty good episode. Um, I, I know The Oval isn't the most popular show, the ratings prove that, but yet again, <laughs> another week, and I'm just sitting here like, you know what? Still a lot better than Sisters. Still a lot better than Sisters, and I know that tonight is the Sisters episode everybody's been waiting for, the entrance of Madam into the series, and th th this episode might be phenomenal. Who knows? This Sisters episode might be a 10 out of 10, but I'm still going to give the oval props because in my opinion, it has been far and away just so much better by comparison. While you could say that Sisters is finally getting good because Madam's showing up, yeah, it took five episodes for that to happen. The Oval has been pretty damn good from the beginning of the season to where we are now. So, yeah, you know, you could argue there are some scenes that were a bit just uh, repetitive. And, yeah, you had some recap scenes like Victoria and Donald just talking about everything that's happened so far, doing a check-in. But these kind of scenes are necessary if used properly. Basically, we see a lot of events going on, but... They need these little powwow meetings between these two or three people to go over. Oh, sorry. One of my cords fell. Uh, two or three people to go over what's been going on on there. And just to let you know that as David and Jim would say, I'll handle it. Don't don't worry. I got this person in line. I need to make a couple phone calls. But this problem's about to be taken care of. Yeah, my throat's a bit dry. I can't do it, David, like I used to. But anyway, let's just jump right into the review. And lo and behold, Victoria and Donald kick off the episode. They go from Donald's office over to the yellow room and chat about everything. And one of the running gags of the episode, I believe it's like Hunter and uh, Victoria, they pretty much notice, Kyle, what the hell's wrong? I mean, not Kyle. Donald, what the hell's wrong with you? Because he's like struggling to move around. Remember, he's still in pain from being shot by Lily. And he, you know, tries to play it off as like, you know, gym injury, you know, uh, shin injury or whatever, sprain. But, you know, they don't buy it. But in any case, they just go over the information, everything in regards to the Jason situation. Uh, Sam getting shot. Donald's concerned about the vice president trying to take him down. And it's even just kind of used as a throwaway line. But, you know, he mentions the hitman that went after uh, Alan and Priscilla. And then uh, Victoria's like, yeah, well, you need to make sure you, and he failed, huh? So take care of the hitman. Oh, already done. So Grip was apparently killed off screen which I feel was a bit sloppy. Um, a viewer hit me up a couple weeks ago theorizing, Jeremy, what if the person that was in the hospital that got cremated and everything instead of Jason, what if that was Grip? And I'm like, nah, because the last time we saw him, he was riding around in that, you know, uh, van. And that was pretty much it. So Grip has been unceremoniously killed off, which I think, is dumb because remember when he called Donald who was high on his pain meds at the time he basically said he failed and you know Donald's like you know hey you don't have your gun do you have a weapon you have a knife take that and you know cut your own head off so I guess Donald called someone again off screen to handle grip which again I feel was that's pretty messed up. I mean if you're going to do that you should have just had grip die when he and Alan fell from the balcony of the uh, staircase in the apartment building. Just have it where Grip is the one who lands and Alan lands on top of him and from the fall Grip dies because just having him killed off screen is pretty sloppy, but that's just my opinion on that. All right, so in any case, uh, you know, Donald's a bit wary of everything going on, but Victoria is confident that everything can be taken care of because of her final card she has left to play. And from there, it's just pretty much up to Donald to keep Dilly, uh, not Dilly, but Lily in line. Okay, so Hunter's in the Oval talking to the doctor. He's still pissed off about the fact that... So the person who was in the bed wasn't my son because the doctor doesn't know about the switch or basically it's like the, the, the young man you were sitting next to in the hospital room. You know, I'm not saying you don't, you know, know your own son or you're a bad father, but he was really bruised and banged up from jumping off the roof of the White House. So he wasn't your son, which of course we know is he was but it was just a matter of the bodies being swapped around where jason was taken out of the hospital and switched with someone else and that's the person who got the autopsy and cremated 
But, yeah, Hunter is just pissed off the fact that the incompetence of the doctor in the hospital don't know anything. If the person who was cremated wasn't Victoria and uh, Hunter's son, then where is Jason? And they don't know. And, you know, there are like two moments where he's like dismissed and he's like, wait, 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 come back, Doc. And, um, you know, he's pretty much talking in circles without the doctor knowing what's going on. Like, wait, that bitch has something to do with it, a.k.a. Victoria. And, of course, he doesn't tell the doctor. So some might say, ah, this scene was played out. No, nope, I thought it was pretty good. I think they did a good job. I mean, yeah, it makes sense. It really just shows you the lack of control Hunter has over any of these situations. He's just, uh, you know, an angry child. And he thinks that he's in control of the world when in actuality, he's in control of nothing. It's kind of like that, um, I don't think this scene made it into the final cut of Iron Man 1, but I remember watching the behind the scenes of it, where Jeff Bridges' character, Obadiah Staines, talking to Tony Stark like, you know what, it's like you don't really control anything at Stark Industries, you know, Tony. It's kind of like you're a little kid in the backseat of the car while your dad is the one who is, um, you know, driving behind the real steering wheel. You're in the back seat with your toy steering wheel. It's like you don't control anything. You think you have control, but you don't. That's pretty much Hunter's situation. He's really thinking like Victoria and her dad, you know, they're messing around with him. And they're the ones who messed around and took Jason out of the hospital. So uh, from there, we go over to a diner. And like I said, I don't know if this is my favorite scene, but I just love the dynamic of Dale and Alan. Just the fact that as each episode goes on, they each learn a little bit more about the other. You know, Dale is happy-go-lucky. Obviously, life is pretty much hell right now, but uh, uh, hey, I'm in Virginia too. But in any case, you know, small town of Virginia and, you know, kind of isolated because he's, uh, you know, a gay man. And from, I guess, uh, in Ruthless, what, you know, based on the way his parents are, they're really old-fashioned and traditional, so anything outside of the norm is odd to them. And they pretty much don't like it. But in any case, you know, they're both on the edge. And the crap food they have is $32. And they don't have enough in cash. Basically, you know, Dale brings up ATM or using the card. But that's not a good thing because they can track Alan with the card. But um, he has, what, 20 in cash. Dale has 10 So they're like $2 short, you know, tax and tip withstanding. So they pretty much, you know, go over the options of how. And I think. You know, Dale is the one to say, you know, these people don't care about human life. All they care about is their image, power, and money, which is the title of the episode. And, you know, Dale's like, so what are we going to do about it? I mean, Alan's like, what are we going to do about it? He's like, I can't just sit here and do nothing. So Dale has the plan of going to his parents' house. And then Alan's like, no, nah, no, nah, we can't do that, man, because if we do, um, there'll be targets. And he's like, huh, well, the way my parents are, hey, they deserve to be. Which is hinting at, you know, their rocky relationship. But I'm just saying that if Dale said that the way he did, then that must mean he's unaware that his parents are dead and ruthless. Because remember, um, damn, what are their names? I haven't thought about ruthless in a while. Zane is the one who stayed at the compound. Crap. I'm aware of uh, Elise and Sa Sam. Like, I know those are the actresses' names, but... Paula and Lacey, right? Paula and Lacey, uh, they were killed. Um, Dale's parents were killed while those two were in their house. So, uh, yeah, did, did did Dale split town before he found out his parents were killed? Because remember, one of my um, theories from, you know, earlier this year was that, oh, well, Paula and Lacey killed Dale's parents. I wonder if the sheriff is going to shift blame and blame Dale, you know, say that Dale murdered his parents as a cover-up story, because remember, he's he required like two million or something, he required a shit ton of money from the highest in order to pay off the cover-up story, so I don't know what kind of story they come up with, but I'm, I, I wonder what the hell happens to make Dale split town, but then again, that's what happens because Ruthless is so far, uh, so far behind in the timeline and the fact that uh, the, the breaks are just too long. The show's coming back in December, but still, sheesh. So, yeah, they, um, I, I don't even want to say they dine and dash. They, they leave, well, they leave the money that they do have, and uh, they split. I forgot if Dale actually put his 10 on the table or not, but regardless, Alan put the 20 bucks on there, so that, that, that was something. 
Plus, they didn't finish all their food. All right, so Max um, goes up to Bobby, and we pretty much get a good look at how far they are from the actual uh, chief of staff's house. And I'm just thinking the whole time, with the way these fools were yelling at each other last night in the show's continuity, I'm surprised they weren't heard and discovered by the 14 people patrolling the house. But Bobby doesn't want to back down, but, you know, due to it being direct orders from the vice president and he knows that she's safe and Bobby's like, how the hell does he know? He decides to, you know, back off and they go over to the house. Okay, so Donald goes to the Oval. Kind of like the doctor, he's grilled about, you know, the Jason situation. Uh, he's convinced that Victoria and her dad have something to do with it. And, you know, when Donald mentions, like, you know, sir, how much cocaine did you have last night? Well, you left the White House, and Hunter's like, that little bit, Alonzo, get your ass in here. Because he suspects Alonzo snitched on them about that little uh, escapade last night. But um, Donald gets Alonzo to leave because he wants the president to calm down. So from there, uh, you know, Donald offers to give him more sleep medicine. And, you know, the reason that, oh, you saw me and your wife coming out of the yellow room, that's because we were planning your uh, son's funeral. I was the one who even did the cremation, you know, had that organized because, you know, your wife asked me to. And, you know, Hunter doesn't buy it. He dismisses Donald and that's it. I love the part where it's like, you know, Hunter says, you know, you're dismissed. And Donald's like, well, sir, I can. And then he just points at the door and Donald's like, really? And yet again, it's just like Hunter thinking he has power and he doesn't. It's just crazy to me. So, you know, his whole thing is like everybody in this White House is trying to drive me crazy. And I think it's working. So we go over to Agent Kane. He calls Kyle to let everyone, well, excuse me, to let Kyle know that everyone's at the vice president's house. Uh, Sharon, Richard, Nancy, Priscilla, Sam, Max, and Bobby. And, you know, from there, and I think... Uh, Kyle asked about it, a cute Burnett, and I'm thinking, cute Burnett, who could he be referring to? Um, was that a nod at Dale or Allen? I don't know. But, um, in any case, he rushes to tell Donald about the meetup and that they should do a drone strike, cover it as a terrorist attack, and Donald calls it off quick because this is the vice president. This isn't just Max and Bobby. So then he bounces to go see the president. And, um, from there, the vice president... Okay, this is probably my favorite scene of the episode just because of everyone's reactions. But I'm taking a point off from the episode because of the fact that how many damn times are y'all going to just throw this gene rape and murder in my face? I am tired of seeing it. It's just so tr so traumatic for me <laughs> because of that episode when it happened. But the And, and I'm just thinking to myself, the Photoshop, I mean, from like Grip in bed with um, Ellie, Yuma on the plane taking hush money. The list goes on. I mean, okay. So the vice president has, uh, as Grady on uh, Sanford and Son would say, <laughs> a cock and bull, a cock and many bull story. Basically, oh yeah, well, I have inside sources. And even though they there are no cameras in the residency there actually are cameras in residency and for some reason you know priscilla like slapped sam i guess because of the yellow room you know sex session that he had with uh victoria so i'm just like victoria i mean um priscilla this this, this isn't the time okay we get we there are bigger fish to fry and yeah it was sad because remember she is now seeing what happened to gene then even though we don't see it uh, Eli mentions, you know, and that's the son in the bedroom with the sword, obviously going after, uh, um, Denise and he just goes down the list, you know, all it's like everything, everything that everyone at the vice president's house is like, well, what about agent Yuma or what about the president coming after me or Denise and, you know, uh, Diane and all these other people. He had like a quick answer. It's like, well, yeah, um, the reason they tried to kill you, Max, is because Agent Yuma was involved in this huge operation for someone over in Afghanistan Afghanistan to kill the president. And and I love my favorite part is like Max asking Sam, Sam, do you buy this? Max, not now. Sam, do, do you believe this? What else is there? And even Simone, I mean, she tries to vouch for her husband. Like, you know, my, my husband is a man of integrity. He cares about people and this country. He has no reason to lie. But you can you can kind of tell that 
if you look at her face while Eli is detailing everything, it, it, it's no, it's not making sense. I mean, Sam, Bobby, and Max are the main ones. You can just look at them and say, like, yeah, they know this is some bullshit. So really, as Priscilla it keeps asking, so what are we supposed to do? <sighs> Go back and live your lives. They won't come after you again. I mean, I'll make, I'm in the works right now because, uh, you know, with the son dead and everything, all we can do is charge them with um, the president with an affair. And from there, it's just a situation where I'll let the president know that I know everything that's going on and to make sure they back off from you. And it's just sad. I mean, there's really nothing they can do at this point. So we go over to Donald and Victoria and, you know, Donald lets Victoria know that, wow, you were right. Hunter's losing it. And um, I'll go follow up with Lily to make sure, you know, I get her back in line. And that's pretty much it. So from there, we go over to Max and Bobby. Everybody's leaving the house. Max, Bobby, ne neither one of them believe it. They, they don't. But from there, Bobby is all of a sudden going, I want to get Lily. Wait, what, what are you talking about? Uh, so, ba oh, yeah, that's right. Because Bobby was like, how the hell you know the, uh, the chief of staff's wife is okay? Look, I just know I'll explain everything after I address everyone else in the room. So basically, Bobby's like, well, you know, if he's telling the truth about everything, then I could just go to the front door and, you know, get her. And Max is trying to stop his dumb ass from doing it. So we go over to um, Richard, Nancy, Sharon, uh, Priscilla, and Sam going over the details. And yeah, he, the vice president did say, you know, you don't have to work at the White House anymore, but if you know you are still there and they try to do, pull something you know you can like call them out on the spot but if you go about your lives and something happens again well there's really nothing you can do so you know we do have a unified group here so why break that up so i mean i know i sure as hell wouldn't go back i know that much but um from there that's pretty much it now Kane lets Kyle know everyone's leaving and he's put trackers on everyone's cars. No sign of Alan though. So from there, you know, Kyle's still working on finding him. Now we go back over to Donald who actually makes it back to his home. Taunts Lily some more. Same old, same old. The fact that Bobby didn't show up and he's going to have a doctor and nurse come in to take care of Lily because she stinks and she's still hurt. But basically she is taunted to check her phone. And it turns out, I'm guessing these like hidden cameras or something like that, surveillance on her mom and Lily's just freaked out. And he makes it clear that he will go after everyone she loves and cares about and kill them if she ever tries to leave again. I mean, he even goes, so I'll, I'll, look, baby, I will go after your mama, your daddy, your sister, baby's kids and that cockeyed do dog. If you ever try to run away <laughs> from me again or inform the press or something. And I thought that was hilarious. Look. Again, Donald's probably my favorite character because he's a freaking asshole, but you could tell that, you know, the actor probably um, ad-libs a lot of these lines and it works it's like your mama, your daddy, your sister, those baby's kids, and that cockeyed dog. <laughs> they all want to get it if you try that shit again. Now, here's the key. Unlock yourself and clean yourself up before the doctor comes because you stink. And Lily is just, you know, distraught, so she leaves. Uh, well, Well, excuse me, she doesn't leave, but, you know, she starts to get herself out of there which i'm wondering how the hell she manages to do that because she couldn't even find the strength to uh like unlock her phone so damn donald all right then the final scene we got eli calling victoria who looked a freaking amazing in this episode by the way i thought victoria was looking finer than i don't know how i mean i know in the early seasons people were like oh when is she not gonna wear that white suit which i thought was great but it's just cool to see her in different outfits but yeah victoria's looking bad this episode all right, so Eli calls her about the whole situation. He bought it hook, line, and sinker. Look, you think I couldn't, you know, get them to buy that BS? Look, I'm that persuasive. So basically, they're going back to their lives, but what you need to do is call off, you know, Donald and Kyle because Max and Bobby are still going to be working for me, and they'll be talking to him at the White House, and and um, Victoria even goes so far as to say, you know what, oh, they're just that mad because they want to have sex with them. Oh, stop, don't make me sick. Well, I want to have sex with you. And then Simone comes in. Who are you talking to? And I'm like, oh, shit. So, yeah, this episode was pretty solid, guys. Um, The Oval's still going strong. Eight out of ten, in my opinion. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Like and subscribe. Follow me on social media. Links are in the description below. And I'll talk to you in the next one.